Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie's Cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have an exciting giveaway announcement to make, so join me further on in the video when I talk about that. But for now, let's look at these cute little shaker cards that I have made for Christmas. These are using a bunch of different products, so let me go through what I'm using today. I have the Mama Elephant Falala -la stamp set. I just love this one. I think it's so cute and adorable and couldn't resist using it today. I have the Mama Elephant Silhouette Snow Trees dies. Um, I had run out of dye, magnetic die sheets, so I kind of had to use my scraps. I have the Honey Bee Stamps um, Snow Globe A2 Shaker die set. I also have the MFT Snow Flurries stencil. And I'm also using this Concord and Ninth Home for the Holidays Stacks die set, just for that kind of snowbank piece. Okay, so I have gone ahead and colored and cut out all of my images. Um, I won't tell you how long it took me to get these trees looking okay. <laughs> I went through a bunch of them that all ended up in the bin. I eventually kind of found a method that I thought worked pretty well. So what I did is I die cut them from white cardstock and then colored them with my Copex. And as you can see, I've added some white gel pen over the top to make it look like snowfall. I have done the same on my little critters as well. I want them to look like they're standing in snow and I just thought that was a good way to add that detail. Okay, I'm making three cards today. So I have three of each of these pieces. One white base piece, one blue base piece, one red frame, one acetate base piece, one kind of snowbank piece here cut from white, and finally a piece of wood grain cardstock that I've used for the base. So three of each of those. Okay, onto these snowbank pieces. I'm just going to add some tumbled glass distress oxide to the tops of these. And just to create a little bit of contrast and interest, you're not gonna see a great deal of it. So I'm not being too fussy about these, just going fairly quickly over the tops. I have cut these from some white 110 pound lawn fawn cardstock. And what I did was I used the base piece from the Honeybee Stamps die set and kind of cut the bottom part of that and then I just use that Concord and Ninth snowbank piece to create the top parts of them. So just did a bit of partial die cutting to get that effect. Now I have these base pieces which are cut from Lawn Fawn Blue Jay cardstock and I'm going in with some black soot distress oxide all the way around the edges to create a bit more of a nighttime sky scene. Again, you're not, I'm not being too fussy because you're not going to see a huge amount of it. I just wanted to add a little bit of a darker detail around the edges and try and keep the center a little bit lighter. So again, I'm doing the same for all three. And once I've done this, I'm going to be doing some stenciling on top of this. So I did blast it with my heat tool just to make sure that the ink was dry. Um, I was a bit nervous about, because I'm going to be using some white ink on top, I was a bit nervous about transferring any of that black ink onto my white ink pad. So I did blast it with my heat tool to try and make sure it was all nice and dry. And I went in with my stencil, which you will see here now. So I pulled out my Snow Flurries stencil. I'm laying it on top of my Make Art Station and holding it down with some magnets. And then I'm going to go in with this Lawn Fawn pigment ink. It's the Yeti pigment ink, which is white. And like I said, I was a bit nervous, so I was trying to wipe off my brush in between each layer. But I didn't really need to because actually the ink was dry enough that it didn't transfer through. So I'm just going, again, fairly roughly through that stencil just to create that kind of snowfall look. And I do the same on all three. So then I pulled out this Lawn Fawn stamp set. This is the Ready, Set Ready Steady Snow stamp set and I use the little tags from that which say Merry Christmas, colored and cut them out and now I'm going to start assembling everything. So my red frames were cut from some barn red cardstock from Lawn Fawn. The base was from some dark brown wood grain cardstock also from Lawn Fawn. And these acetate pieces which have kind of like a snowfall detail on top, there's lots of snow in these cards today, these acetate pieces came from Hunky Dory which is I believe a UK brand. I bought them in the UK many years ago as part of a kit and I've still got loads and loads of um, sheets of this acetate left and I always like to pull it out at Christmas time because I like the effect that it gives. So when I 
die cut acetate, I find that it doesn't always cut smoothly. Um, so there were a few little pieces around the edges which I needed to trim off to make it flush with the frame, but that's easily enough done. So once those were attached, I'm just using liquid glue for everything here. I'm attaching my little signs onto the top, which um, I'm trying to use my grid mat to help me center up. And once those are attached on all three, I'll move on to my base pieces and start working on those. So with my base pieces, I started out by attaching the snow banks to each of them. So just again, using liquid glue and making sure that I center them on correctly so that everything lines up nicely. And that's the great thing about using a die for this because everything is obviously cut exactly the same size and shape. So it all fits together rather nicely. So again, I'm just doing this quite um, kind of production line style, making sure that I do each step along the way for all three cards as I go, rather than finishing one card, going back and doing the next one and so on and so forth. I just find that this kind of production line style works best for creating multiples and it just makes it easy to kind of create a few cards in a shorter amount of time. Okay, so now that those are all stuck down, I'm using my images to kind of lay everything out and make sure I can figure out where everything's going to go. I used all the images from the stamp set apart from the little lamp and the little music notes. And I've used six snow trees, I believe. So um, I've put three trees and the little bunny on one. I'm putting one tree, one lamppost and the little dancing critters on the next one. And then two trees, two critters and a lamppost on the last one. <laughs> so while I'm um, going to adhere all of these down, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the giveaway. So I recently reached 500 subscribers on YouTube. In fact, as I speak now, we, I have 501 subscribers. So I'm awfully grateful to every single one of you for your continued support, for joining me on this lovely little crafty journey that I'm on, for all your lovely comments that you leave. Um, it really does inspire me and, um, you know, I do this because I enjoy it, but it's also nice to get a bit of validation every now and then, isn't it? Um, so thank you all so much for being here. And as a little thank you to you all, I wanted to do a bit of a giveaway. So I am offering one of you the opportunity to win a gift voucher to your choice of either Simon Says Stamp or Seven Hills Crafts in the UK. So the gift voucher will be to the value of 20 US dollars for the Simon Says Stamp gift voucher or 20 pounds UK sterling for the Seven Hill Crafts gift voucher. So I thought I'd do it this way because it gives more of you an opportunity to um, purchase uh, depending on where you live in the world. Uh, Simon Says Stamp do um, ship worldwide as do I think Seven Hill Crafts do, or at least I know they ship to Europe. Um, and the reason I've chosen these two companies is because I have used them before and have always found that their service to be good and their shipping to be fast. And I know that they have a huge range of products, including all of my favorite brands like Mama Elephant, Lawn Fawn, My Favorite Things. Um, so there's loads of stuff that you can choose from. So <laughs> that is the reason why I've chosen these companies. This giveaway is not sponsored by either of those companies, nor is it sponsored by YouTube. It is something that I am just doing off my own back. And I, as I say, just as a thank you to you all. So in order to enter the giveaway, you need to be a subscriber, obviously, because this is a thank you to my lovely subscribers. You need to be over 18 because I will need to ask for your email address in order for the gift voucher to be sent to you. And you need to leave a comment down below. Now that comment, I would love to hear from you what you would like to see in future videos of mine. So if you would like to see more coloring or um, you want to see specific stamp sets being used, anything like that, let me know and I will do my best to try and uh, do that in the future videos. Okay, and finally, the um, draw will close on Tuesday the 1st of November. So that gives you just under a week to leave a comment. Um, it will close at 10 a.m. my time, which is Dubai time, 
which is 7 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time or 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So those times on Tuesday, the 1st of November, the draw will close. After that, I will be announcing the winner on a video on Wednesday, the 2nd of November. So keep your eyes peeled then and hopefully, fingers crossed, you could be the lucky winner. So I'm just finishing off attaching all of my little images here, making sure that everything is stuck down nicely because I'm creating a shaker. I did use liquid glue and I tried to make sure I used plenty of liquid glue to make sure everything was stuck down well so that my shaker pieces don't get too stuck. Obviously, there's um, a bit of a risk of them getting stuck kind of in the seams where the images sit um, but I tried to minimize that as much as possible by making sure they were secured well. Just using my little um, adhesive remover there to get rid of some little spots of glue that I had left on there and now I have gone ahead and used this Heffy Doodle foam strips um, foam tape strips to add to the frame of my shakers. I've done that for all three and now I have this little sequin mix. This is a neat and tangled sequin mix that I've had for a couple of years. And I'm going to be using that. Before I put those sequins down though, I'm going to use my powder tool again over everything just to make sure that the glue is, um, is dry. I'm pretty sure it is dry, but just to make sure that there's nothing left that my sequins can kind of catch on and stick to. So just going around all of my little images to make sure that that is done. I will then use the powder tool all around the edge of the um, foam tape in my shaker frame just again to make sure that my sequins don't stick and that everything moves nicely. So once I'm happy that that is all done I will go ahead and spoon out my little sequins into the center of my card base um, and as I say I'm using a kind of mix that I got from Neat and Tangled um, I actually bought it from Seven Hills Crafts funny enough um, quite a few years ago so I'm not sure of the name of it but it's a blue kind of mix it's got some little snowflakes in there it's also got a couple of little red um, kind of sequins in there too which I thought worked with the frame then I have this other little sequin mix that I created myself. I went to a Herbert Ashery store here in Abu Dhabi and I managed to find these gorgeous little shakers which I thought looked um, quite, kind of like snow. They're quite iridescent. There's some kind of white iridescent and some blue iridescent ones and I thought they worked quite nicely. So I'm adding some of those as well. As always, I don't like to fill my shakers too much. I like to um, have enough room for them to shake around really, really well and also so that you can see the images. So I'm attaching my foam tape down, making sure everything's centered and all lined up. And there we have it. That's the first one done. I'll do the same for all three. And that is kind of the front of my cards complete. So I just need to work on the backs. And I just love shaking these around. Can't help playing with them. Okay, so now I have these base pieces that I had already cut. This is again from some Lawn Fawn white 110 pound cardstock. And now I'm just using my scoring board and I'm gonna score at about half an inch down from the top. And I'm gonna reinforce those folds with that kind of bone folder piece there. So I'll do the same again for all three. Now I decided, I mean, you could just leave these as cards, but I decided to at attach a little bit of twine in order that if you wanted to, you could use them as an ornament. They would be a pretty large ornament <laughs> because they are A2 size. Um, but I just thought that was kind of a little bit of a fun thing to do. So in order to do that, oh, sorry, before I do that, I have stamped out these gorgeous sentiments from the stamp set along with the little lamppost. So one of them says, have a magical Christmas. One says, may your holiday be filled with many wonderful moments. And one says, tis the season to be jolly. So what I've done is I've attached that red and white and it's got a touch of pink in it as well. This is a twine from Lawn Fawn, um, which I've had for a little while and I can't remember the name of it. I will um, look it up and put it in the description below. And then I've just um, I used that same score tape on top of the twine as well. And I'm going to use that to attach my card base to my card front. So lining everything up and then pressing it down at the top. And there you can see I've got a little card, it stands up nicely, but it also will be able to hang from the, that twine at the top. And this score tape is really strong, it's lawn fawn score tape, 
and it um, works a treat and it will hold everything down nicely. I know it's not much um, being adhered down there is only a tiny bit at the top, but it's really strong and it works fine. So <laughs> just to reassure you, because I'm always paranoid about things falling off and I like to use a lot of glue, but this is actually going to work nicely and it just holds everything in place and it makes it nice and easy. You could, of course, put um, just do some partial die cutting and create um, a, something out of just white cardstock and then attach the blue piece with glue onto the white piece, if that makes sense. But I thought this was the easiest way of doing it. And that is it. My three cards are complete. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to join in with the giveaway. So make sure that you leave a comment. Make sure you're, you're a subscriber and that you're over 18. And as I said, I will be announcing the winner on the 2nd of November. So keep an eye out for that video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you all again soon. Take care.